In my last video, I talked about how psychiatry has absolutely no scientific evidence that any mental disorder in the DSM-5 comes from a chemical imbalance or faulty genetics. But if these disorders are not biological illnesses, then what exactly are they, and where do they originate? Well, if you've watched most of my videos, it's pretty obvious that what most of us have been going through seems a lot more like something you might read about in the Old Testament, where God comes to Abraham, Moses, or even Noah with a special message or mission. Yes, this so-called mental illness of ours sure has a strong spiritual side, there's no doubt about that. And I'm sure it's because your own experiences have felt so spiritual that many of you have also touched on what I think is the real source of these disorders. Kundalini. Over the past five years, I've had a number of people ask me, Sean, is this a Kundalini awakening that's happening to me? It's Kundalini, right? Well, yes and no. Now, I don't want to get into a lot of intricate details about this because, to be honest, a lot of it is still a mystery to me and I think a mystery to everyone. But there are a few basics that I can lay out for you. First, mystics around the world consider Kundalini to be part of our original life force, a spiritual energy which moves through us in its own invisible circulatory system, which I think is best depicted in the artwork of Alex Gray. This spiritual energy and system have not been discovered by science yet, and perhaps they never will, because Kundalini is not a physical energy like electricity which can be measured. Nevertheless, it's been widely recognized by mystics for centuries that without our Kundalini life force, we'd be dead. This bioenergy and its accompanying system has different names in different cultures. In Chinese Taoism, they refer to the energy itself as Qi, and work with the energy through a practice called Qigong. In the New Age movement, you may hear about this energy as composing your auric field, etheric body, or subtle body. In Hinduism, the energy is called prana, which flows through our bodies in what is commonly referred to as our chakra system. Let's take a closer look at this system. The chakras are a set of seven energetic wheels that run up the spine and into the head. While the seven wheels of the chakras make up the central core of the system, it also extends itself through all cells of the body. In addition, at the base of the spine in the coccyx area sits a sort of secret nuclear power plant to the entire chakra system. It's here that the core of the kundalini energy sits quietly in a dormant state waiting for the opportunity to awaken like a coiled snake. And that's where the word kundalini comes from. It is Indian Sanskrit for coiled. In classic Hindu yoga, the kundalini awakening most often happens when a person enters into a deep state of meditation, often with the intention of activating this energy through a specific blend of breathing and concentration techniques. Recognizing the potential for danger throughout the centuries, the deep meditative practices have often been a closely guarded secret shared with meditation students by their master or guru only when the master thought the student was fully prepared. Once the kundalini or coiled snake is awakened, the energy is said to rise out of the cossacks and up inside or alongside the spine through each chakra until it reaches the top of the head. There it integrates with the entire chakra system, producing profound mystical experiences. So at least in theory, for the prepared mind, the kundalini awakening should be a fairly straightforward process. Unfortunately for most of us, the reality is a lot messier. In fact, what people need to work through looks a lot more like kundalini syndrome, which can have aspects to it which are identical to many of the sensations that people have in their bipolar manic episodes or acute psychosis. Here are just some of the symptoms listed on Wikipedia related to Kundalini syndrome. Mood swings with periods of depression or mania. Bliss, feelings of infinite love and connectivity. Transcendent awareness. Feelings of energy or electricity circulating the body. Sensitivity to light, sound, and touch. Insomnia, the surfacing of unwanted, repressed feelings or thoughts in the conscious mind. Indian mystic Gopi Krishna was the first person in the 20th century to write about his own very difficult kundalini awakening. For him, it was easy to see the relationship between madness and this mystical awakening, as during his experience, he even questioned his own sanity. 
In his book, Kundalini, the Evolutionary Energy in Man, Gopi Krishna writes, Among the inmates of mental hospitals, there are often some who owe their malady to a prematurely active or morbidly functioning Kundalini. Speaking personally, I've had the unique experience of being hospitalized for an acute psychosis in 1996, which the psychiatrist thought was either bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, and then I had a more classic Kundalini awakening, which started in 2009 and continued to unfold for a period of two years. Both were powerful energetic experiences, starting with an explosion of energy at the heart chakra. The only big difference between the two was that in 96, I got delusional, thinking I had died, whereas in 2009, I remained completely sane, but felt as if all my defenses were being stripped away. I've shared both stories in detail here in separate YouTube videos, so feel free to see for yourself how similar the experiences actually were. Now I'm sure some of you might be asking, what is the purpose of having to go through such a difficult experience, especially one that's supposed to be spiritual? Here's why. You see, according to psychologist Lee Sinella, author of The Kundalini Experience, it seems that the Kundalini Awakening experience is simultaneously one, a purificatory process, two, a process of healing deep unconscious material, and three, a transmutative process into a higher, qualitatively new level of consciousness. If you've been following my work, you'll notice that I've focused a lot on these points as related to bipolar disorder, as it's become obvious to me that the hidden purpose of bipolar disorder is exactly what Sinella has written here regarding Kundalini. So even though the Kundalini process can be very difficult, there's no question that it brings with it huge benefits, namely your own spiritual evolution. Speaking of difficulties, there is one set of physical symptoms which people get during a Kundalini experience which are less common among people with bipolar disorder. Take a look. Intense heat or cold experienced as energy. Involuntary jerks, tremors, shaking, itching, and tingling sensations, especially in the arms and legs. Increased blood pressure and irregular heartbeat. Headaches, migraines, or pressure inside the skull. Pains in different areas of the body, especially the back and neck. All of these symptoms are related to that Kundalini Cobra's attempt at breaking through the energy blocks in your chakra system, most of which are related to emotional trauma or repression that needs healing. So once again, while it may be painful, it's worth it. So, in answer to all your questions, yes, I firmly believe that the origins of bipolar disorder are rooted in our Kundalini, our spiritual energy. However, the experiences that most people labeled with bipolar disorder have do not tend to follow the more classic flow of the seasoned Hindu yogi with a prepared mind. Nope, for us Westerners, the path to enlightenment is a lot more, shall we say, bumpy, freaky, funky. But hey, we've seen the light, haven't we? Now the question is, how to get back there without getting arrested? For those of you interested in more details related to the Kundalini aspect of mental disorders, there are three books I can highly recommend. Emma Bragdon's book, The Call of Spiritual Emergency, From Personal Crisis to Personal Transformation, looks at a wide variety of difficult spiritual experiences, any of which could lead to a diagnosis of mental instability. She shares many stories of different people going through very difficult Kundalini awakenings. Catherine Lucas's book, In Case of Spiritual Emergency, goes into great detail about the Kundalini aspects of what her psychiatrist clearly saw as her own mental disorder, as well as some helpful recommendations for managing your own Kundalini crisis. And finally, The Stormy Search for the Self by Dr. Stan and Christina Groff, which begins with the story of Christina's very difficult Kundalini awakening, which started during the delivery of her firstborn son.